you go to the SIOS, the SIOS also has in-column detectors. They have a, a naming convention. They're called the Trinity detectors. The T1 sits at the bottom of the pole piece. Um, it's an AB diode style, so a very common style of backscatter detector where one half of the detector can be turned on to create a shadowing effect. Um, but when used together, it gives you a nice backscatter image. This is looking at a hard drive reader head at 500 volts, so very low accelerating voltage. It's giving me a nice backscatter image. I have a carbon particle there in the middle, some carbony debris kind of smeared across it. Hard drive reader heads have a diamond-like carbon on the surface. And so the point of interest is to see what's going on with this diamond-like carbon and not really the ceramic that's underneath it. Um, backscatters give you the high energy uh, contrast mechanism so you can see that there's contamination there, but it doesn't tell me much about the surface. When we go to the T2, which sits a little bit higher up in the column, now you get a totally different view of the sample. You can really see the surface. And specifically, if you pay attention to the image and you see these lines that are going across the sample, these are scratch marks. These are wear patterns from a hard drive, re hard drive uh, head that's been used. It's been sliding across the, the, uh, the hard drive plate and has gotten some damage on it. And it's also picked up some contamination somewhere which now you can really see this particle is sitting up prominently on top of this. This stuff is a little bit lower profile. And the contrast mechanism that we saw before is now completely different. There, these, this contrast is being caused by um, grain channeling. Uh, at least that's my assumption, because when I looked at this a few times for this presentation, our interpretation kind of went back and forth on it, especially when we got to the T3 detector. The T3 sits highest in the column, is really only impacted by the weak secondaries when you apply a stage bias and derive those weak secondaries up the column. Now we're looking at this going, wow, okay, reality has completely shifted. What am I looking at? Well, this is the true surface of the diamond-like carbon. There's some kind of material on top of the diamond-like carbon. I'm guessing this is a contrast mechanism caused by um, charge conductance. So these two materials are actually the same, but this one is, um, conducting the electrons a little bit differently. How do I know this is the surface? Well, one of the giveaways is this blurred spot here in the middle. Unfortunately, one of the things you have to think about when you're trying all these different settings is if you're going to go to low KV, don't image on something and focus and stigmate uh, zoomed up on your sample because when you back out and mag and take your nice low KV image, you're gonna see the beam damage that you've created, whether it's charge buildup, you're drawing contamination to that location. Uh, anyone who's used an SEM um, for any period of time knows what a burn square is. You get a nice raster burn. And in this case, this little box area here is an area where I was imaging when I was using the higher KVs and not thinking about, I don't know, let's see what this looks like at 500 volts with the T3 where I'm really gonna see the surface detail.